Hello, beautiful bastards. The name is Wolf, and welcome back to some more Last Epoch content. Just a heads up, this is not a fully-fledged build guide. This is more of a build diary. So if you are an acolyte expert, I might actually want some of your input here. But yes, this is my very first time playing an acolyte, and I've decided to play a lich because it just seemed to vibe more with my particular playstyle and the things that I seek out in games like these seem to fall more in the purview of the lich more so than the warlock and certainly not the necromancer but yeah this is not a build of my own creation this is a build that i first saw about two weeks ago by rice qt now i have taken some of his base principles and changed some of the seasoning together with help from the actual official last epoch discord acolyte channel there were some very helpful people in there a lot of people are playing this build so a lot of know-how there. And I kind of started putting things together and, you know, got my work checked, if you will. And they, it seems to have some potential here the way I want to do it. There are still questions I'm looking to answer, still kind of gear uh, decisions I have to make. But you can check out the actual uh, section in the description box here below to see my current planner. But yes, it has been quite a fun experience so far. It's like I call this the Lich the laser lich, is that the way I'm going to call it? Laser lich or machine gun lich or laser machine gun lich. I'm not sure what the actual terminology will be. But you essentially have like this pseudo auto bomber build. It's not quite auto bomber because you do have to press buttons. People get it wrong sometimes. But yes, it's kind of auto fires, which is very, very comfortable. You do have to put like these little circles on the ground and they kind of fire in those areas around it. You have an AoE around you that applies all kinds of wonderful debuffs and damage. And you also have Death Seal, which is a, a mechanic that constantly gives me anxiety. The Lich form itself is very, very fun. Lots of movement there. Although I do think I need to speed the build up somehow as well. I'm looking for maybe a haste item. But we'll talk a little bit about that once we get into the gearing section. So far, the leveling experience has been very fun. We're still leveling the build. I am currently moving my way through monoliths, and I am planning to easily push anywhere like up to four to 500 corruption with this build, because I think once I get the gear sorted, it's going to be absolutely insane. It already feels ridiculously powerful once you start pulling off the death seal and the lich form and the everything just lines up perfect. It already feels like unethical levels of damage, considering it's a poison build. But yes, maybe that's just the Acolyte. We are also leveraging some Warlock stuff uh, in the in the passive trees, of course. So maybe there are some shenanigans going on there. And yes, we are also kind of abusing a bug or using a bug. We're not really abusing it. We're using a bug. So we'll kind of see how that goes. But let us talk a little bit about the gear. And perhaps you can give me some insight. But I, I like to think I am on the right track. But perhaps you can steer me into the correct path if I am not. So let's talk about it and see what I can do with it. So let's talk about my current plan. This is the build that I've been showing to the people I've been talking to in the official Last Epoch Acolyte channel. And they have shown me the ropes and I've kind of been fine-tuning the seasoning of this particular cook. So let us talk about the mandatory unique, which is the Stygian Cold. This is allowing us to get that minigun effect, which is only going to become better and better the more mana and intelligence we have. If you look at those last two nodes, increased Stygian beam frequency per intelligence, but also more Stygian beam damage per turn current mana. Lots of damage coming from this. Very good. Mandatory. Now, I prefer to go with the Mad Alchemist Ladle as my weapon, with some mana and damage over time slammed onto it, because apparently the math shows that around 700 or high 600 mana, it starts overtaking most combinations of Chitin Daggers simply because of the interaction with the Stygian Coal and the many, many hits. So I'm just going to go with the Mad Alchemist Ladle, set it and forget it, because all the debuffs are really, really nice. You get some mana gained on Potion as well, which can be clutch during the early stages of your build, but also the, the flat mana you're going to get from the Implicit, the spell mana cost is all really nice. Just a real quality of life and powerful wand. Definitely preferred over a dagger for me. Now, in terms of the helmet, we're going to go with the Revenant Mask base, preferably. Because we are going the endurance route due to the fact that we have a mechanic in this build, Death Seal, that's putting us at low life so we can leverage lots of endurance and endurance threshold. Um, we are currently at, as you can see, if everything is max rolled with this relic, it's at 95. But you want to stick at 60. You don't want to overcap it too hard. 
If you're at 60, you want to just start stacking life instead, because life is also going to scale the actual endurance threshold a little better. So if you have everything perfectly rolled, clearly we're overcapped. But if you remove the relic, for example, we're going to already be much closer. And if we don't have everything perfectly rolled, it's going to be much closer to 60. So it's going to be much more realistic to kind of look at where we want to place the endurance. Having that said, though, mask, as you can see, mana intelligence, mandatory, increased health, and then endurance, if possible. If you're overcapped, try to go for flat health. Very simple, right? We have the amulet, some resistances on the implicits. Very, very nice. We have mana, mandatory. Increased damage over time is the best uh, damage mod you can find over intelligence or after intelligence and mana. After de increased damage over time, it's poison damage over time, but that would be suboptimal. But yes, try to go for damage over time due to the uh, damage over time mechanics in the build, like damned as well, not just poison. And speaking of poison, we do go for the resistances where we can get them because we do need to cap everything. Very important, especially for poison because we need to get or close to... 150 plus poison res due to the fact that we are planning to nerf our poison res based on our intelligence the more intellect we have the more poison resist we lose it's a little weird mechanic so keep that in mind um in terms of the body armor we have of course the revenant plate maximum health gained as endurance threshold very powerful we're looking to get plus four level of drain life or otherwise plus four level of reaper i'm not sure which one i prefer uh, intelligence, obviously. Increased health and flat health on the chest because those nodes are uh, just very, very valuable on the body. We have a nice little belt here, spider silk for the resistances. We have mana regen because there's literally nothing better. I'm actually thinking about maybe slamming a unique belt, maybe a viper tail or something. Who knows? Um, or maybe getting a, a nice rolled weaver one. I am not sure yet. We'll figure it out as we go along. But yes, we do want the poison damage. It is the best damage mod we can get on the belt for this build. We have hybrid health, incredibly powerful. Percentage health, incredibly good. And then in a perfect world, we might even slam a experimental seal on it just to get some more mana regen and mana get back for those uh, painful moments where things don't line up for your mana. Return mechanic through the Wandering Souls. We do have a font of the Erased. If you have something like this, very, very good. Remember, endurance can be replaced with certain resistances. So if you have like a nice resistance and a health and an intelligence and a damage over time or poison damage over time, you're good to go because you get percentage health and mana, which is very, very powerful. But otherwise, you can just take the red notables here and put them on any kind of other ring base you might like. Maybe some cooldown reduction bases or flat mana bases. You know, there's some, there's some good ones over here. It's more like a grocery list for me at this point. But if I did not want to use it on a font of the Erased, I would go for an Opal Ring. Or maybe I would even go for, if I want to get real specific, where is that my, where's the matter? Yeah, a Sapphire Ring maybe? That could also be very good. So you have options. Alternatively, you can skip font of the Erased and go for like a Tongue of the Aberrant Seer. As you can see, we have Intelligence and Damage Over Time on it, which is the same thing that we have over here. And if you have more LP, try to slam Endurance or Health or maybe some Resistances. Very powerful stuff. Lots of good poison no uh, effects here that we can benefit from. So very, very good. But don't try to get one with like just one LP. Try to go for like two LP or higher. But otherwise, you're better off probably getting an exalted ring that is very, very nice. Give or take. Give or take. We do want the eternal gauntlets. Armor mitigation also applies to damage over time. We are poisoning ourselves and there's other mechanics as well. We are leveraging. We have mana, intelligence, hybrid health, and then endurance or otherwise resistances where they are needed. In a perfect world, we would also seal the experimental armor mitigation also applies to damage over time with bonus armor. That would be really, really comfy. Uh, we have the Citadel boots. This allows us with a nice exalt, exalted crit reduction to become crit immune. We combine this, of course, with intelligence, movement speed, hybrid health, and then a perfect world for pure quality of life, like a haste uh, experimental seal. Since we have... A less than two second cooldown on the reaper form this would mean that we have permanent haste while every single time we get our movement skill back which is going to make the build feel infinitely faster i can't wait till get some to get something like this and then last but not least we have the ambitions of the erased acolyte i would love to get a relic like this failing this um because you get a plus one level you get some endurance which is really really nice 
and of course some ward rotation ward gain and poison but uh or on potion use but if you can't find this relic which is very difficult to do i got very close to it you can also just use um where is it chance the poison on hit that would also work really really well so once again it's just changing the base but keeping the mods that are on it it's more like a grocery list same thing with the font right you just have to hit in terms of the idols they're very simple life life or health 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 it's health all the way up and all the way down in the blessings we have void rest for capping all rest for capping armor because armor is good fizz rest so lots of resistances and then we have mana because well we are scaling mana as a build so that's very simple as well nothing too extraordinary i think in terms of the passive skills actually let's go with the skills first we have as you can see i did not spec the acolyte relic but yes we are looking for reperform this is going to be the big one we are scaling vile shroud so we're going to get a bunch of resistances as well for intelligence or through intelligence this allows us to leverage a uh, fume weaving later as well we're getting some values for soul shroud and armor mistress of the gate i am picking up three points of swift harbinger simply because i don't have cooldown reduction on my gear and i want to have a fast movement skill so with haste this is going to feel really really good but i guess this is not mandatory you could put these points elsewhere and get more health drain reduction or more armor per point which is very very good we are picking up all the way down here the pestilence note with three points of venomous coating for the poison duration and then also herald of rot for the global poison chance you could get additional points for reaper and then you can like fill it all out and be very very tanky um speaking of filling things out um this is the reason why we actually want to have some wonderful poison resist because as you can see poison resist per int goes down by one enemy poison resistance per int goes up by one or enemy poison resistance per int goes down by one in terms of penetrating their uh, resistances or reducing them which is going to be a lots of damage lots of damage uh, on top of that we have some enemy poison resistance three points for more reduction of those resistances more damage for us poison damage taken which is very important because we are doing poison to ourselves. As you can see you poison yourself every second so we do want to make sure we have some additional poison resistance we are also healing ourselves with absence of life which is nice we are increasing the plague with plague rat for 60 percent just to have more coverage and then we also have a chance to apply bubonic aura for another dot which is just very nice which is also one of the reasons uh, we want damage over time mods and such which is very very good it also spreads if the enemies dies before the delay very very good so uh ilmet frequency also very powerful just a very good aura with a lot of power in it you could if you want to change this out for transplant i did that during leveling that definitely feels good for mono living i just don't think it's going to be worth it in the end in terms of just the sheer power aura of decay provides for this build through fume weaver and all the uh all the other wonderful utility is in there so just keep that in mind death seal this is what i call anxiety the skill um because of the deadlock right here health reduced in activation 33 percent. so we are immediately at low health activating all the low health mechanics and hopefully with enough endurance also very close or very close to the endurance threshold giving us a bunch of damage reduction immediately as well which is why that endurance is so important um we are also picking up mortal pulse obviously we're probably going to pick up grim skill i'm actually contemplating maybe going down here if i have some additional points so i can maybe pick up curdled flesh but as you can see i have to spend all my points for that so i am not sure what i want to do here i might just round out the mortar uh, mortarium or maybe pick up an extra another hit over here i am not yet sure where i want to go with this so if anybody has any kind of recommendations i would appreciate it um, but yeah, we're picking up the haste on release as well. If we have the permanent haste mechanic on our boot, we can also unspec this, allowing us to pack up curdled flesh. So there's a lot of like wiggle room here. So I'm really uncertain. This is one of those skills where my inexperience with the acolyte really starts to show. However, drain life is the skill that we are using to do the minigun with. Uh, this is where we're also going to put our body armor most likely towards, which is going to allow us to pick up uh, dark shackles, making the channel a cast. 
turning it into like the uh, the minigun effect through the Stygian. We're going to extend that for some two seconds, which is very comfortable. We're also going to pick up virul uh, Virulence. If you have the Aberranth Ring, it's going to get more skill points as well through that, which is very, very nice. And we're going to scale up with Poison, which is good and comfy. Lay Waste is nice for damage. We're picking up four points of Condemnation, allowing us to stack even more damn stacks, which is more damage over time mechanics. We're also picking up one point of Unholy Mask, because we're firing so fast, this is going to be capped out super fast anyway, so don't worry about that, just one point is enough. We're picking up two points of Ward of Conviction, so we may pick up Eternal Servitude. This is the bug. Wandering Spirits should not be infinite with this setup, but for some reason it is. So we're picking this up, so as long as you have Wandering Spirits and then you have lasers going, the Wandering Spirits never turn off. It's supposed to turn off, it doesn't. It's a bug, we're using it because it feels... It makes the build feel so good, so we're just using that. Use at your own risk, right? It is a bug. And then on the Wandering Spirits, uh, which is so nice to level with, by the way. This is an incredible leveling skill. My god, it's good. Uh, we are picking up the max reveal rate and the max duration. We're picking up poison to make them poison as well, giving us even more skill points through the ring. Uh, we are picking up a little bit of extra damage here with Reap the Damned. This is where I put all my excess of points in, because most enemies will be cursed and damned at the same time, so it's lots of bonus damage. We are picking up the infused souls early, because this is going to keep our mana sustained. Because if we have infinite wandering spirits that are constantly running out, we are going to get a lot of mana back through this note. And then also we pick up Spectral Putrescence, which allows our spirits to cast poison towards the enemy. And then we have like a, a random point right here. You can put it over here if you want to. You can maybe do Familiar Souls if you want to have a more condensed package of souls for like better focus damage, which is really comfortable. Uh, I'm just taking Soul of the Filth so I can guarantee that the server doesn't mess up with my casts. Uh, since they cast once per second, they have exactly four second uptime, but if there's like a weird tick rate issue, they may lose out on a cast, so I'm just picking up Soul of the Fifth, uh, Filth to deal with that. But otherwise, this point seems unnecessary, and you can put it just anywhere you want. So that's up in to you entirely. So that's kind of what my skills look like. The only things I'm not really sure about is the, is the Death Seal part, so I would love to have some more information about that but we'll get there and then in terms of passives we take 20 points in the acolyte pick up all the intelligence because we're in stackers we're picking up stolen vitality for six points one point of mania so that we can get some necrotic resistance and poison rest with some ward retention the ward retention is not very important but the free resistances are very comfy uh, on top of that however if you uh notice that you are over capped even with fuming uh even with the fumes and such if you manage that you are over capped you can unspec this, maybe pick up some more stolen vitality, maybe pick up some more armor. You can optimize that. I just picked this because resistance isn't until I'm geared, I'm going to not spec or respec into bone aura for more armor or something, right? Like that seems logical to me. Uh, in terms of the warlock, we are picking up five points of soul stealer. The effect cooldown is doesn't exist. Don't worry about it. It does not skill the cooldown, but this gives us more mana back as well. Um, so you only need five points. It doesn't do much else. Spiteful Decay for more damage against Curse, which is pretty much all the time forever with more damage over time and health, which is nice. We're picking up 8 points of Occultist Mind for the Intelligence and the Mana per Intelligence, which is really, really nice. And then also Vile Tide for the Poison Chance and the Poison Overload mechanic, which is very, very potent. Um, I am contemplating maybe picking up Spirit Leech, but I don't know where to find the points. But yeah, speaking of points, 10 points in... Apocrypha, Apocrypha? I don't know how to pronounce that, but yeah, it's intellect, so pick it up. Eight points in Dance with Death, which becomes tripled at low life, which is what exactly happens when we enable Death Seal, so it should be up during all the important moments for much, for, for lots of damage, because it gets tripled, it's 120% increased damage, it's massive. We're picking up eight points of Lasting Stench, because we are a poison build, after all, poison damage 56, poison duration 56, I don't have to explain it, that is very powerful. Crippling Insight, more Intelligence, very, very good. We don't care about health regen because we are leeching most of the time, most of our health back anyway, instantly. Uh, the Three Plagues, because, well, it's penetration, obviously. Decaying Form, 10 points for max poison chance, and then a little bit more poison damage taken, so that's going to hurt. A uh, little bit more leech, but Solma, 
and then 10 points of mind over Bonnie simply because of the intelligence. So yeah, I do want to spec the Spirit Leech here to help offset all the necessary uh, healing or draining and the degening that we are going to do. I might have to like unspec Soul Stealer, find a way to make my mana neutral and then go with Spirit Leech or maybe I have to unspec Mind Over Body or Decaying Form to offset the healing here or to get more healing while taking less damage. I don't know. I'm not sure yet. We're going to kind of figure it out as we go along, but this is my current build, my current build plan. So by all means, let me know what you think, and I will keep leveling and hopefully make improvements as we go along. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, have a good time. Make sure to subscribe. I am out!